host here at TFNN. He has his show on at 10 a.m. Eastern time, right there on our YouTube channel and in the den and on Twitch now. Uh, fantastic show. And additionally, he has a newsletter. This is the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman. Now, one of the things I really like about this newsletter is you get, you know, you get your daily uploads, right? You get your daily uh, newsletter, kind of talks about what we're looking at, the portfolio that exists. But one of the things that I think really sets this newsletter apart is that every Friday you have the Overview Friday. And this is where Basil, he has a video for all subscribers and he kind of goes over everything that's happening dur during the week, maybe a setup for the next week. Uh, additionally, if you're a subscriber to the opening call newsletter, you get access to a trove of recorded live educational streams or webinars, we call them. Uh, the most recent one was July 23rd, 4 o'clock to 5.30 Eastern time. It is sectors and stocks to focus on in this next phase of the market cycle. And um, Basil just has a really good eye uh, for seeing how things move in this market. So Basil, how are you doing? You know, we have NVIDIA down a little bit. You have some of the semiconductors on the way up because of the CHIPS Act. Uh, you have ASML down, of course. A lot of interesting stuff going on today. Let me go through. Thank you very much for the introduction. Absolutely. Let me go through a couple of things. Yeah. First of all, the Dow today made an all-time high at 43,277. So we've been along the Dow at various points. We've been along since um, March of 2020. We still have uh, that core position. We've taken a little bit off. We've got the core. Then we also along the Dow from the low of October of 2023. We're also looking at uh, the uh, Dow that uh, we've got a shorter term position and that position has taken us to from the August low to where we, we the high of today. Um, it's about a 36 percent gain on that position. Yeah. So that's one thing. Now, the other is. So where are we now? Um, you can see from the left side chart, the technicals that I use, the, the, the nine period moving average is still way over the 14. The MACD is good. The stochastic's good at 87%. I love it when it's over 80%, but especially when it's in 87 to 93%. That's really good. Uh, and the on-balance volume is looking very good. A relative strength, a little gray line has turned down. If you look at the weekly charts, they're still very strong. And the technique that I use called the Chapman Wave Inside Track Repellent Zone, we've gone above that out of the last one, two, three, four, five five weeks this week we've gone above it for the first time without touching the green line which is the breakout line and that line right now says that if there is a, a on the weekly chart if there's a close below 42,500 um, then we might come back into un underneath that uh, what was resistance became support we'll watch that closely so that's one thing the other is I like for subscribers I like to have a whole variety of Positions in different price ranges, almost like going to a store to see what you can afford. And within that context, I also like to have all these different sectors. So I just go, I thought it would be appropriate just to go through a whole bunch of um, some of the positions we have. For instance, we've had AIQ. This yes. is the Artificial Intelligence ETF. Um, and we've had it for quite some time, and I, we've had it from the 28th. And today, the high was 38.19, all-time high. And it's pulling back uh, quite sharply intraday from from the gap down from yesterday's high. So that's uh, so that's one of the positions we've had, and that's up about 26 percent. Bank of America. So that's in the artificial artificial intelligence. In Bank of America, I wanted something in the um, financials. So we've had Bank of America uh, for quite some time. We've had it from the 31s. And today, BAC had earnings report, a pretty good report. Oops, why is it not coming up? Let me just type it in. There it is, BAC. BAC is Bank of America. Oh, there, it's in front of me. It gapped up. It's in leg C, so this is it should still go higher. It's at a recovery high. Um, the all-time high was back at 50.11 in February of 2022. It came slumping down to 24, got cut in half. And then it comes running back. So 24.96 was the low in October of last year. We're in it from 28. And here it is at 42. It hit 43 today. So that also is a very nice gain. That's uh, about about a 38% gain. So that's that's in the uh, financials. Mm -hmm. And then we, uh, we actually, at the August low, we bought the... IWM, the Russell 2000 small caps, 
it's been tough, but I, my belief was that at some point there will be a recognition that the small caps are part of the market right. and they really have to start moving up. So we've had a very nice game. <clears throat> And uh, we're in from the 203 level, back in the August low, and uh, 224.95 was the high back in September. It pulled back, made a cup formation, and this arch formation said that we were anticipating there was a chance it could retest that high. So today it went to 225.50. So that's another nice gain with that. And we actually added uh, an aggressive long a few days ago. So this is acting quite nicely, and it's really important. I want to see a broadening of this market. I'd like to see the yeah. small caps. I'd like to see the KRE, uh, which is the regional banks, start to move higher. They've actually just started participating and independently like that. Oops. Okay, there it goes. You can see it made a new recovery high. It's actually a, a multi-year high today, the KRE. So these are areas that I think we could rotate and see start to move. Then I wanted something in the... Um, here we go. Robin Hood is a stock that's in the broker area. Oh, yeah. We waited, 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 and just the day after the the August low, we bought this, and that one is up also very nicely. I must just check. I think it's up about 68% from where we got it. We got it in the 16th today. It hit uh, 27.33, and it's a leg D. I just wanted to mention something. Since you were talking about uh, what's the, what's the symbol for the Donald Trump one? D DJT. D DJT. Yep. So here's your leg D. So a peak D in the Chapman Wave methodology says you've got to be a little careful because that's where other things can happen. Look at this leg D. Yep. Whoosh. Made Big a high today of 33.85 and now it's trading down to 26 and 39 areas. So I just this is a purely technical thing I thought I'd mention. Um, and then we've still got our Microsoft. Microsoft from the 338 around number low, we bought it at a little while back, and it ran it all the way to the 440s. We've taken quite a bit off, and we've got a core position, and it's trading now at about uh, 417. So it's done very nicely. Um, so I, I like to. I just wanted to mention that you know, in the portfolio itself, we like to go into all different areas. You had mentioned the ad itself mentions uh, uranium. Oh, uh, yeah. We had fabulous gains of uranium <laughs> uh, some time ago. Took took every, to everything off, and we got a brand new position. And yes, UEC. This is Uranium Energy Core. So um, we've also had a very nice gain, about a 16% gain in the newest position. But this is interesting because you see this these two lines, this green and red line in the uh, weekly chart. That's what I call the Chapman Wave Inside Track Resistance Repellent Zone. Okay. Well, now we've broken above it. That means there's a chance that uranium could start to move with higher highs and higher lows in the next few months. So that's what I'm anticipating. No, and there's more news coming out today even about, uh, that, I would say you're bullish for uranium. Basil, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow, 10 a.m. for the Tiger Technicians Hour. Thank you very much, Jacob. Have a good day. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle after this break.